Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, how are you? We're coming to you live from Harlem in New York City. And this is Alex, and this is The Ramble. My, there's Lori Thompson. That's a very nice frock you have on today, very good color. Well, thank you. I was feeling summer festive. And I used to wear kerchiefs in college all the time. I had a wide array of colors. You were known as the kerchief girl? Well, among other things. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, Cheap yeah, slut, I think, was the other one. No, you know, I wasn't promiscuous in college. at all. Well, I've never really been. I'm kind of a serial monologist. Did you ever get really None promiscuous? I never did, really. It just no. never... It, it just, uh, to me, it deleted it uh, diluted the experience if you didn't have something going mm -hmm. with the person. Yeah. You know, yeah, something emotional. Oh, so, so you had to have something emotional going. Well, uh, but it meant more. So, one, you know, like one night stands were never my thing. And, well, I uh, think women generally are more protective of themselves that way than men are because we don't have <laughs> the fear of pregnancy. So. Well, yes. So, and that's a big one with us from the time we're six. You know, we're warned about that. Yeah. And do, do you know men are getting HPV, that virus, though? From I think so. Yeah. 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 From going down. That's why they're <laughs> saying they should give it to to males as well. You know that H uh. HPV thing they do when kids are growing up. Yeah, yeah I, it would probably be advisable. Yeah. You know, because given the giving these sexual enthusiasms and the habits of yeah, the human population. They're giving them HPV Is that a vaccine it? The, or something. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, I like ointments. You put them on, you go about your business. You don't interfere with your, you know, your internal ecology, just topical. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so I, I was thinking the other day, you know, I was watching uh, some old video I had sitting around here. And mm -hmm. I, I uh, and and one thing led to another, and I remembered that we had gone to the Barcelona Olympics together. Oh yeah, and that was really one of the best Olympics I think we ever had anything to do with. I think the second best was Lillehammer. It was nice. Oh, Lillehammer was gorgeous. Yeah. It, there was such a spirit of community, international community, yeah. and because that you can't drive in the Storgata area. And so that just made it even more brilliant. Yeah. Well, you couldn't drive in a Lillehammer? No, well, no, they had that area called the Storgata, which is essentially the town, the center of town. Okay. But, you know, and that, but so you couldn't, it just really made everything more friendly, more camaraderie, everything. It's, it's the but place it was, where you buy trolls. Yeah, you buy, yes. I don't remember seeing any Norwegian trolls. There's something but, about Norway. They they look upon the troll as uh, a, a wonderful thing. Okay, so yeah. everybody has to have in their home a a troll, right? Displayed or, or outside their door a troll. <laughs> uh -huh. And my my friend Steve, no longer with us, but Steve said to me, "Well, if you're going there, bring me back a, a troll." Mm -hmm. So I got a remember I got a huge troll for him. You, I vaguely remember the troll thing. And yeah. I got myself a smaller troll. <laughs> you know, so they could they could pal around. But schlepping that thing back home was ridiculous. I'm having huge to put troll. a troll in my uh, you know in the bin up above the uh, seats. You know. Yeah. Uh, and because they're um, anything fragile, because we for the reason of when uh, when Rick, my husband, takes long walks, like four mile walks, he used to take them every day. And he would just find a bunch of coins. He'd find, a goof, you know, just all kinds of coins in various shapes. You know, I mean, because trucks run over them. He must be them. looking at the ground a lot when he's walking. I, th I think he is just, you know, because he barrels. I mean, he he walks four miles 
and no I time. can't even walk four miles anymore. I can maybe I can walk a mile. Yeah, I can walk four. I know because we did it this past trip. But you're young. Made. You're young kids compared to me. You We're know, river I, I, I actually have to use a cane now. But but you know you could make it work because you could do the dapper thing. Or you could, you know, have a really cool cane. Yeah, but I don't have a cool cane yet. I'm, I'm not well, willing to admit that I need one. Actually, I can walk without it, okay? Yeah. But it gives me a sense of security from about falling. Because I took a couple of amazing falls in the last year or so. Yeah. And I realized that because of my neuropathy and stuff, my, my feet do not talk to my brain quite as well as they <laughs> used to. And so I have the cane just to kind of, it's not to support me when I'm walking, it's to no. help me if I fall. Right, exactly. Yeah. And, and, you, and plus, but you can make it stylish, you know, like the Monopoly guy. Well, I'm thinking himself. of getting a more stylish one than I have. I have one, now, of the, one of the standard ones you can get at Amazon, but there's a $50 version that's got like a wolf's head on it, you know. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Oh, but anyway, model. getting back to the uh, Olympics, um, were you with me when I ran into O.J. Simpson? Oh, was I with you? Yeah. I was the one that went to the bar and ordered our Diet Coke and beer right. That, right. that he put on his tab. He he put it on his tab? Yeah. And so I, I rarely say O.J. Simpson bought us drinks because that's that implies that that, you know, hey, how are you? You know, yeah. that, a kind of schmoozy thing. He didn't, it wasn't that way. I was standing probably five feet from him. Yeah. And uh, I was getting our usual standard order, a cerveza and a Diet Coke for you. And he just said, put those on my tab, which I thought was kind of classy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so you've liked him ever since? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I like him enough till he killed that pretty white wife of his. Yeah, but he um, he uh, he was uh, he was there. I video I shot took a shot of him walking, but I remember he was in that bar. I do remember he was in that bar. Yeah, boy, you remember stuff I don't remember. I you know I do have a strong emotional memory. So, well, you so. would have a memory of that because O.J. Simpson picked up the tab for your coke. Well, and because he was O.J. Simpson, and he is a rather handsome man. And he at, did then at that time, a big celebrity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, he was he was there, you know, because he was a good commentator of not just football. I don't think they football at the Olympics. I don't think they have. They may. I don't know. They but did you know that cornhole is now a professional sport? What? <laughs> have you ever heard of cornhole? Cornhole? It's where you I've heard it beat. as a term used for one's butt. I, they keep it upscale. Yeah, but but they uh, they you take these bean bags, um, which you know are various sizes, but usually hand size. And then at each end, um, you have a, and the court can be as long or as short as you like it to be. And then there is a, a target which is on a slant. And it, it's made of wood, except in the center, there's a hole. And so you toss, you stand at the other end and toss your bean bag, hoping it will go into the hole. And then the one with the most holes wins the event. But <laughs> it's gonna, it's gonna be, it is a professional sport and ESPN's all over it already. I can imagine. Yeah, should you and I go and try out as a, you know, as a duo. <laughs> I can't tell anybody I'm playing with, I'm playing cornhole. Yeah. You know, it's, it's just, it's it's just anyway, kind of naughty. Anyway, so getting back to the Olympics, because that yes. was a great Olympics. That, they, that was What, what happened was, is that the time before I had told you, boy, you're in Barcelona, I don't know how they're going to get that place cleaned up. Because right. what happened was when uh, uh, Franco, ran the country, he hated Barcelona because it was part of what they called Catalonia, mm -hmm. which yeah. were the Catalonians who really were anti-Franco. So he yeah. tried to starve them out, literally, by not supplying them with anything. So when I first time I went to Barcelona, it was the 
grayest, saddest town I've ever been to in my life. When we went back, Franco had died. Yes, um, and he's still dead. Uh, uh, Don Jose, was it, that took over? What was his name? I uh, cannot yeah. remember. Well, anyway, the, 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 see, what happened was Franco fought for the um, uh, country to have a, you know, a uh, aristocracy, a, a king and a queen, whatever. Monarch. Monarch. It was for the pro-monarchy. Well, the original king of Spain had fled with his son. And Franco said, send me your son and I will train him to be the next leader of this country because he said, once I die, I have stated that we will return the monarchy to Spain. Oh. So, so they sent him this kid and he raised this kid. Um, I can't remember, was it Don Jose or Don? I can't remember. Anyway, I don't remember anything anymore, but I do remember this story. So what happened was uh, he sent him the kid and he raised the kid and he taught the kid how to be a leader, which in Franco's case was being a iron-fisted leader, right? <laughs> and Not as soon, warm and cuddly. As soon as Franco died, this kid went, well, I've been bullshitting him all these years. Uh, I'm gonna make this a democracy. I oh, know wow. I'm the, I know I'm the king and you can still call me the king and you can still let me live in this nice place and I have a lot of money and things like that but I'm making this country a democracy and he declared Spain a democracy. So he was a democracy mole. Yeah, so in a that. way at the time I considered him one of the greatest leaders on the face of the earth because this guy was, you know, what he called, he was a uh, um, uh, 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 giving up his right yeah to be king to, to be king you know? to allow these people to be a democracy well all of a sudden there was a faction of conservatives who liked the idea of a dictator and they yeah. went and held the uh, the what was it the you know the congress or whatever they have over there hostage they had guns and everything and were holding up and trying to prevent him from allowing this thing to become a democracy. Yeah, January But he fought 6th. him and he won and he, it became a democracy. And when we went there, I said, I warned you ahead of time, I remember. Gee, you know, Barcelona's not the greatest place in the world. It's really a mess. Right. They had completely cleaned it up. They had dredged the port. They had done everything. They, they literally had cleaned that city up like you wouldn't believe. And it was wonderful, it was radiant. All the fountains, which weren't working when I was there, were now working, Yeah. you know? Yeah. And it was just, it was wonderful. It was a great place to hold an Olympics. Yeah, well the cities get such a makeover for the Olympics that if you go right after the Olympics, you avoid the crowds and you enjoy all these wonderful amenities that they faceless. You know, well, the facelift still exists. I mean, they right. didn't, they didn't let it down at all, you know. Yeah. But I mean, it was a a great. Uh, the, we went to the opening ceremonies there. Oh, you know. Remember, and they shot an. I don't know if this was Barcelona, but they shot an arrow, and with TV cameras and angles, it looked like he got the arrow through the Olympic flame. But we were there, and you and I, we had some conspiracy theories. <laughs> like, did it really, or did it go slightly to the right, or slightly? It didn't, it didn't matter. Right? It was going to. It was going to light up anyway. Of course, yeah. of course. But what amazed me is that right across from where we were sitting was the grandstand for the dignitaries, and all the big leaders of the world were there. Yeah. It's the, it's, I mean, G8 is a big deal, uh, but the Olympics is a, an international, it's a global event. Yeah. And that's why, you know, plus it's but fun. I, mean, I think Castro was there. I believe. Sitting in that stand. I mean, if you had dropped a bomb in that stand, you would have lost hundreds of world leaders. Yeah, know. the, uh, yeah, the security for that kind of event has to be off the charts. Yeah. But it was it was wonderful, and I think we we saw one of the four tenors sing there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, that was one of the Olympics, and I think that might have been. It no. was Pavarotti. 
uh, Placido Domingo. Yeah, that was and, that was Barcelona. Was it? And there was a chick singer I like, Donna Summer, I think, was there. And they do a version of Bette Midler's From a Distance. G- Google it. It's YouTube. It's right. fantastic. But now, the biggest night we had, and I was watching it as a video, because there's a video of it, was when we went to the mini stadium, mm-hmm. which uh, is uh, crowned at the top of the hill by that giant castle, as it was. Mm-hmm. With an amusement park next to it. This Tibidabo. Got a, in other words, Tibidabo. Boy, I'm glad yeah. you remember these things. Tibidabo, which is this beautiful church. It's just magnificent. And next to it is a Ferris wheel. Oh, man. And, and I that, never could figure out who thought that one up. Oh, and it's, it's a contagion across Europe now. Everybody has one. I think we went to one in, was it pra- not Prague? But right next uh-huh. to right next to a beautiful church? No, no, they've, they've kind of got a clue that that might be a little too much of a dichotomy for most people. But it was a beautiful but, church. And yeah. right next to it, you, the thing that was most prominent you could see from the bottom of the hill was the Ferris wheel. Yeah, exactly. I finally went up there one day, uh, maybe years later when I went back, and I went up to Tibidabo, and, and uh, you know, it's a place to see. And uh, yes, uh, the Ferris wheel was still there. I think there's a roller coaster there and a merry-go-round. And and now so many prominent cities in Europe have one, not next to churches. Oh, but who said, I, who said God Ferris wheel? You know, yeah. I, I, but <laughs> Budapest has uh, one. What, what happened at the mini stadium is we saw, I think, the greatest concert I've ever been to. Oh, yeah. And, and it helped, too, that uh, we met a certain EJ, uh, right before the show. Yes, I mean, El- right. this was Elton John's big concert at the Mini Stadium, and uh, we got to go backstage and meet with Elton, who I reminded him when I was there, I said, you, you know that I was the first person to interview you when you came to the United States for the first time on your first tour, because he yeah. came and I did an interview with him at uh, WPLJ. And his response ah. was, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, it didn't matter. It didn't matter. Well, he created such a sensation when he did that uh, series of engagements at the Troubadour. And everyone of, in, you know, Hollywood influence was there. Celebrities, celebrities, celebrities. And he became their darling because these shows were so phenomenal. And those were his first concerts in the United States. And it went fabulous. I mean, right. classic. Right. Yeah. But I mean, it, it was it was just, I think, one of the best concerts I've ever been to. Yeah, it was pretty great. I mean, he, if people were just dancing like crazy. Yeah. To and, all the uh, music. And pe- plus, people are so excited because was it before the opening ceremony, like the night before? Anyway, people are just so jazzed to be at the Olympics. I mean, it's a, you know, for many people, a once in a lifetime thing. And so every the crowd is so stirred up. I mean, he could have just played Tiny Dancer for three hours and people would Well, the thing that. is that what I was amazed by is that I, I knew he had hits. You know, I, I was a disc jockey and I played music, but I talked about music later on. So of course I knew about him and all that he had done. Yeah. I did not realize at that point, which was still early on in his career, the totality of the hits that he had already had. Because oh, he started amazing. playing one right after another, Benny and the Jets and uh, you know this thing and that thing. He hadn't even gotten to the point in his career where he had written your song yet, you know. And he still well, had like one hit after another and everybody was dancing. It was the most exciting gathering. It was 75,000 people. Yeah, I, I think he'd written your song because I just read Bernie Taupin's uh, memoir, mm-hmm. which is very good. And your song, was one, it was kind of like an album cut, but then disc jockeys picked up on it, I think in 75, maybe 76, something like that. But uh, it wasn't a big, one of his big, big hits. It was an, you know, a deep cut, an album cut. But that was so fun, man. That was just- But that concert was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And we will, and we got to meet him right before. I mean, he was talking with us through our friends from Atlanta who did a morning show. John had just moved to Atlanta. Mm-hmm. And I mean, he stopped at the 
end of our conversation, he walked to the piano. I mean, that was how, you know, most, most artists, you know, they need at least an hour, maybe two in their green room, dressing room, so they can just get psyched right. for their show. But he just was talking to we us. We had barely, barely time to get up to our seats to watch the beginning of it. Exactly. Yeah, that was, a Barcelona was my favorite Olympics. Yeah. yeah. And, and we, uh, uh, and he was, uh, it was just, fun. I just remember that concert and I, I was watching it and actually you can see where we were sitting. Really? You know, and they take yeah, a well, side shot of the thing. And my friend I just visited in St. Louis, we were talking because Elton John came on and it was for something political. And I swear, he, his hair pieces have gotten so out there, he looks like um, a house straw from Akron, Ohio. He really does. He looks like a woman. And so it's you just really now. Think so? I, I think his hair pieces have been pretty good as of late. Really? Now, they, to me, they just look very um, not, you know, not as outrageous as Phil Spector's, but it makes him look like a bunch of women in the Midwest that I grew up with and uh, who were really excited to start collecting Social Security. Well, I've been told that he actually had to wear a hairpiece now because what because. happened was he, at some point, decided, I don't like being bald, so I will get some kind of work done on my head to make it, you know. I think there's yeah. one thing where they actually cut a, 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 your scalp here and then brought it together. He tried wow. it, but he was trying everything. So his head was kind of looking like a battle zone. <laughs> and so, so he was forced to start wearing hair pieces. Plus, you can't really grow hair on a star very effectively. You know, they usually grow around them. Because I've got a deep one, man, clear to the middle of my head from when I, I was wearing tube socks on hardwood floors, uh, hardwood steps, and I felt myself falling. So I grabbed the hall tree and not, it, of course, it just came down on me and made a bigger fall and cut me from here, from the hairline to way back here. Really? Yeah, and I was—I mean, I knew I so was. So you have you have kind of a bald spot there or something? No, no, no. no. It—it's—I don't know if I can show it to you, but it starts about here and it's a line. It just goes back. Wow. And it was bleeding profusely. I knew the best thing, um, ice, man. If you put ice on anything you injure in the first minute or two minutes, yeah. it will make the healing process zoom. No pun intended. Yeah, but, but anyway, I, uh, you know, I just and we were at the opening ceremonies of the of the Olympics, and we got these little boxes with stuff in them that you're supposed yeah. to use during it, like the little we're supposed to light up these glow sticks and mm -hmm. things like that. I didn't use any of it. I kept that box for years. Oh my gosh! And hello, eBay. It you still might it be in storage. I don't know. I can't remember what happened to it exactly. That's yeah. cool because my husband's mother, she went to Olympics and, and I think it was in Atlanta and uh, bought the pin set from all the sponsors in a frame. Yeah. And it is pretty cool. Well, folks, if you ever look at a, a copy of that Olympics, what year was that? Do you remember? 94, I want to say, or 96. Maybe 90, maybe 94. Maybe 94. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But anyway, uh, uh, 94. Uh, uh, if you see the Olympics and, and you see all these glow sticks light up at the Olympics in the opening ceremony, and there's one little missing <laughs> glow stick. That's because I, I didn't <laughs> use my... Uh... In fact, I think I actually got somebody else's as well and brought it back and gave it to somebody. That's really cool. Yeah. That's like when we went to um, Carnival. Yeah. You know, they give you all kinds of things to help you participate in, in carnival. Yeah. And uh, we now yeah, say you get, you get yours, and then you kind of look around and get a spare for a friend. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah, it was, it was pretty cool. They gave us commemorative shirts. They gave us a lot of carnival swag. And then we went, we went to the, uh, we went to, we went to quite a few Olympics. We went to the Atlanta. Yeah. I think we went to um, the, uh, you went to some I didn't. We went to Alberville. Yeah. We went to uh -huh. Little Hammer. But you went to uh, Nagano, yeah, yeah. Because I wasn't and with the station at the time, you know, so I didn't get to go great. to that one. <laughs> but it was wonderful. I mean, we had great seats. Coca Cola does everything really quality. They did so a nice had, job. 
Yeah, and we, and we had like business class or first class seats on the plane, which they of course paid for. And we got sushi, you know, for our snack, which I love sushi. Yeah, well, and don't I, tell I, me about that Olympics because I missed it and I felt bad about it. Oh, oh Ben, it sucks. So you, don't, you know, tell you me would have sucked. been. Bored. Tell me it sucked. Okay. <laughs> it blew. Chunks. Okay. Hey, that listen, we've saying. run out of time here. Oh man! But I knew that that would cause us to have a discussion about yes. about the Barcelona Olympics, which I think was the best we ever went to. Oh, the best! Without yeah, question. far and away, and the first. Yeah, too. ladies and gentlemen, yeah. that's Laurie Thompson. Wave goodbye, Laurie. Bye bye. <laughs> Okay, all right, okay, all right, okay, okay. The sound went all wrong. Oh, look at that. See that? Oh, well, that happens now and then, doesn't it? Oh, let's see here if I can fix that. Let's see here. Let me get my Alex camera, and then I got to go up to filters. I got to go to Alex camera, filters, and then I've got to go here, and then I've got to do this. There we go. Mm hmm. There we go. Okay, and we go close, and I think we're fine now. All right, okay. That's because I'm wearing this shirt that's kind of like a green shirt in a way, and it reads it wrong, and sometimes I have a little trouble with the, uh, 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 the blue screen, or green screen, actually. It's a green screen back here. So anyway, yeah, well, I'm okay now. I'm all right. There we go. By the way, this is the uh, last show of the week. Uh, we're not doing tomorrow. Tomorrow's the Fourth of July, and what the heck, you know? It's not. It's not a good thing for us to do. Uh, on the Fourth of July, we want to celebrate America's birthday. All right, and then uh, because uh, it's a, t you know, it's it's like the, just uh, the end of the week, and there's an extra day. I figure we won't do it Friday either. Okay, that, is that does that suit all of you? Do you agree with that? Okay, uh, we won't do it on Friday either. What I'm doing in the meantime, however, is I'm installing a brand new piece of equipment in here and it will give me a chance to install it without having all the problems that one would have with installing it, okay? Uh, it happens to be an abs a new mixer for this show and it is, it is top of the line, okay? Uh, I, I went out and I said, I got it, you know, I, this is what I, this is what, Marjorie says, oh, how's your new toy? And I keep telling her, it's not a toy, it's a tool. Uh, and yeah, it is a tool. Uh, and uh, so I went out and bought a new board, it ran me around 750 bucks. But it's, it's wonderful. It's all, all digital and uh, it, uh, it just uh, has all, it, it lights up with all these different colors and everything, and it uh, really looks uh, looks terrific, you know. So anyway, I, I thought I'd uh, uh, I, I should uh, show you. Uh, well, here here's a picture of it. Wait a minute. Let's see if I can if I can bring this up. Computer. There we go. And I uh, where do I where's my computer? I don't know where that is. However, so I don't know where to bring it up. Um, well, here, we'll just do it here. We'll do it this way. Okay, so you can see it. Okay, see, that that's it. See how beautiful that is? How gorgeous it is? It's all, it's it's wonderful. All those little buttons there, you see those colored buttons? Yeah, I can actually put music and stuff on those and have various elements of the show on there. So, anyway, that's, uh, I, I thought I'd show that to you. Okay. I, I don't know what happened. I guess I lost my thing that says computer on here. But anyway, um, we're, uh, we're, we're ready to go. We should talk to some of the people. There are only three waiting. Uh, but, uh, and this is the last chance for people to come on here all week. So uh, here they come. Here comes Charlie Wallace. And here comes, uh, there's Alan. And uh, we're waiting. Trucker Steve I, is trying to get on here, but he hasn't hit the button yet. So, you know. Uh, let's see here. Charlie's wearing a... Uh, here comes Trucker Steve. Okay. Here we go. There he is. Hi, Steve. How are you? Okay. I can barely hear you. 
Okay. Oh, and I'm I can here. hear you, Charlie, but I can't hear Trucker Steve. I'm here. Oh, there you are. Okay, yeah, okay. You sound fine now. And um, um, uh, let's see here. And, and we have Alan, too. So, hi, Alan. How are you? And here comes Jeff. Jeff is joining us. So, you know. So this is our last show of the week. Um, um, I, uh, I talked to um, uh, uh, Amy, and I told her I'm not doing shows tonight, tomorrow night or, or Friday, and if she wanted to take them off, she could. And she said, no, I'll do them both nights. All right. So, okay, so good, you know, if she decide, But then she may decide at the last minute, and, you know, so I'm not, not guaranteeing anything. But I'm going to take it as a little vacation off, and I'll probably get all frustrated with installing this new equipment. So, you know, better I don't do a show for the rest of the week. Um, hello, <laughs> Jeff. How are you? Good. Yeah. Good today. Yeah. And uh, let's see here. Uh, what does the shirt say, uh, Charlie? Oh, it says, you matter. Unless you multiply yourself by the speed of light twice, then you energy. Then you what? Energy. Your energy. I see. With MC squared. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, boy. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Yeah, we have laugh. Yeah, well, I mean, he's, you know, he's into physics humor. <laughs> the only physics I, everywhere. the only phys physics I really know are laxatives. So, <laughs> you know. And Alan, hello, Alan. Hello, Alex. What's new? What's new? Uh, you got your board, and uh, you, you always take days off when we're on, but never on the Monday show. Hmm. Wait, wait, ne uh, no, I never take off Mondays. It could be, it could oh. be uh, literally uh, the most uh, high holy of religious di Jewish days, and I would still do it. Yeah, I, I would do that show if, you know, maybe on my deathbed I will do that show someday, you know, just because I got to do it. Well, Marjorie and I have decided what we want to do for our vacation, for our big vacation. Oh. You ready? I don't know. She's going to look it up and see if, it, if it's possible. The Orient Express. <laughs> okay. Well, no murders, though. Huh? Have any murders. No, no murders. No murders. But Express. the Orient Express, which goes from Rome, I believe, all the way into Asia. Uh, and I'm talking I, about the real one, not the one at Disneyland. No, I'm talking about the real one. <laughs> and there isn't one at Disneyland. I wouldn't know. But, uh, yeah, no, we, we, you know, it'd be good. Be good. Interesting. Anyway. Mm. This could be cool. Huh? This sounds cool. Well, mm -hmm. that's our latest desire. But I mm -hmm. want to be able to do it fast. So, I, you know, but she figured, look, we get on a train and we stay on the train for the whole trip. Right? It's stuck. train ride. Probably stop at certain places, maybe let us get out for a while, and we can go see some weird, you know. I've, I've seen some documentaries on the Orient Express. It isn't the same as it was, you know, not back in the day when it was, you traveled the Orient Express because you, uh, you know, w wanted some adventure and whatever, but it's, it's, it's still... You know, and it's a much more modern train than the old one was. And uh, but anyway, so Marjorie's going to look it up and see if we can uh, book passage and do it soon. You know, and they probably have pretty good Wi-Fi, I would imagine, <laughs> on the Orient Express. So I can maybe even do some video and stuff. So it'd be good. Anyway, you know, thank you very much. That's our. Yeah. That's what we decided. Cool. So anyway, uh, last night. Um, uh, our good friend um, um, Josh um, said let's get together and just talk to each other we have a group that we talk to each other on Saturday nights okay and I said well you know it is kind of Tuesday it's my day off I don't know if I feel like doing it but then I did it and well, God did we have a great discussion last night and I thought for a moment in the beginning of it to actually record it and then play it as tonight's show. Mm. 
Uh, but it, and I wish I had because it was a really great discussion about you know what's going on right now vis-a-vis -vis, uh, Joe Biden. I really would like to hear what what Josh has to say about it. Josh kind of agreed with me. You know, we kind of agreed that it would be best for the the whole country uh, if uh, if Joe Biden decided not to run. I, mean, I think I think he's ready almost. He's got Alzheimer's or something, dementia. No, I don't think he necessarily has dementia, but he has something. Yeah. Uh, and you know, I mean, I understand it. I mean, it could be it could be even the combination of a lot of medicine. Uh, he supposedly had a cold that day. Uh, it could be a combination of medicines that he's taking or whatever. But for whatever reason it was, it wasn't a good. What could I, what's the word I'm looking for? It wasn't good optics. You know, mm. it was terrible all the, optics. All the studies I see, like on channels other than Fox News, say he should leave for the good of the party. Uh, another uh, another Democrat would have a better chance against Trump. No, well, the only problem is who's the other Democrat? Well, the other Democrat, I think, has got to be um, um, what's his name from California. Yep, mm -hmm. Gavin Newsom. Gavin Newsom. Probably, I think that would probably. destroy the Democratic Party. What? That would destroy if they pass over Kamala Harris because she's uh, black. You, you're absolutely pass. look. Do you want to win? You want to lose? You're going to lose because half of the black people out there aren't going to vote. Uh, you know something? I, I once they hear what what uh, Newsom has to say. He's not going to have a problem winning them he's over. Got a, he's got a big black vote here in California. I mean, are you going to tell me that the black the black populace out there is so stupid they would vote against their best interests? No. I'm not talking oh. about voting against. I'm saying not voting at you, all. You run Kamala Harris, I'm telling you. You've lost the election. Absolutely. You already lost it because I'm telling you, you put anybody but her in there, you're not going to get enough black votes to be. I disagree with you. I, I, I really disagree with you. I'm the only black guy here, look, so. Yeah, okay. So are you? Would you? would you vote for Gavin Newsom? I would, but that's oh, just me. Okay, well, there's one black vote. But I'm talking to lots of other black people that won't, because they would be pissed off because they ran Al Gore and he lost. They ran Mondale and he lost. They didn't care, but the but vice president is always the one next in line. You're gonna pass her up. What, what if we? What woman? if we? What if we had uh, Kamala Harris move temporarily to Nevada? Okay, and Gavin Newsom runs. And keeps her as the vice presidential choice. Yeah. Then how would that play in the black community? Well, I don't know. I have to talk to people about that, but it's still yeah. it's Do you do you have do the, you black people have meetings? They get together and they decide. Oh, yeah, every the, Tuesday. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> well, you know, from the things I've seen, she doesn't have a real good chance. The interesting thing is, is uh, Biden's war chest. <clears throat> can only go to the vice president. If anybody else comes in, they've got to start their own. No, he chest. can he can dictate the no, the war he chest. He can, he can dictate anybody. the war chest, yes. Yeah. yeah. I think Gavin Newsom would be a great choice. I think he's a great choice because he's got what I he's a um, he's a stealth candidate, much like I thought of, of Obama as a stealth candidate. Um, Obama was good looking. He was, uh, you know, really articulate, uh, knew, was a good speaker, you know, had all the, all the, all the things you needed to be president. And uh, he, uh, you know, I think he, he won over America. I think that Newsom is the same thing. But I think that what you got to do, you know, the other problem you have with Kamala Harris is she is, at least in people's minds, same old, same old. Okay. Well, so is Gavin Newsom. Hmm. How's, he, how's Gavin Newsom any different from Biden? Uh, try try about thirty years. Well, I'm not. Besides, try that, about so thirty years Trump and try about state. right now. Far more articulate than Biden is. Could I go know, into it. Could and who could state. go? Who could go into a debate and make mincemeat? out of Donald oh, Trump. obviously he could do that. Okay, so wouldn't you want to see that? Yes. You know, all I'm saying is we're, we gotta be in it to win it here. 
And I don't think that, and I, you know, I like Kamala Harris. I always have. I do too. I don't know what everybody thinks is so bad about her. Well, uh, it, I, you know what it is? It's the same uh, thing that most vice presidents have as a, as a rope around their neck. They're always looked upon as just, they, they don't see them doing anything that much. Hi, Tony. Uh, they don't see them doing that much, you know. Nevertheless, Al Gore got to run for president in 2000. Yeah, and what happened? Yeah, Walter Mondale got to run. I'm just saying, mm -hmm. as long as it's a white man, they get to go. But if it's a black man or a black woman, they don't look, forget look, about it. To begin with, the blacks well, in America have, have no reason to bitch. A couple of presidents ago, we had a black president for crying out loud. What, he wasn't black enough for black people? Black people love Barack Obama. You know, yeah. if, if Biden stepped down, she is welcome to run. No, he should step down and let her be president. What? Who said what? Pam. What did Pam say? Come on, Pam. Come on, Pam. Come on. 100%. Join in on this discussion. We need... right. I, I, I'm going to join in on it. I'm with Charlie 100%. See? Because, yes. Because not only are you going to piss off the black community, you're going to piss off a lot of Democratic women. Women, yes. And, and how do you, when on earth have you ever passed over the vice president? The only reason you're going to pass over because. Teddy Roseman. How many of those, how many of those women, <laughs> when they see uh, uh, Gavin Newsom, might start swooning a little? Oh, for Pete's sake, Alex. That's how, we vote. That's how women vote because he's cute. Hey. Come on, come into the 21st century. Well, Alex. I'm coming you know, in the 21st you know, When it comes to debates, Kamala could kick his ass. Thank you. Yeah. Thank she's you. A, I, forget thank about you. race. She's a prosecutor. <laughs> yeah. She's a you you got a point there. You got a good point there. And she's been super active about but talking about some the, people, um, abortion thing. Some people yeah. who I talked to in California uh, felt that she wasn't a particularly good district attorney or a particularly good attorney general. Yep. So, so like you know. Her. I agree, too. Yeah. I mean, I like her. You know, I've, I've never uh, had anything against her, except she, I think she dated Willie Brown, who I can't stand. Um, oh, well. You know, because I can... He said he never watched your show, so we're... A... <laughs> the heart loves what the heart loves. You can't you can't fault her for that. Yeah, but I mean, I think she was... Uh, I think she, you know, I think she's very accomplished in everything else. But yeah. right now, right now, we got to win. Yeah, I mean, we got to win. Yeah. I think we're going to win. I'm not even worried. Because, and if you run Kamala Harris, yeah, we might we might not lose. If you run, run Gavin Newsom, we may lose a few blacks. But I'll tell you, if we run Kamala Harris, we're going to we lose do. a lot of whites. You know, every, okay. every time I'm watching the news. And, and the fact that we're even here talking about losing yeah. blacks or whites is, you know, really pathetic. Uh, uh, <laughs> Every I'm time just we watch talking reality, just like really? they're all talking about reality about Biden. Well, this is reality. I think yeah. we all agree. Look, I think that so far it sounds like we all agree that Biden should not run. You know, I think he's got to the wall. He's still old. He's, I saw a video of him speaking in a debate in 2012 mm -hmm. with a, uh, another fellow. I forget what it, the other guy's name was. But there's such a big difference from from oh, then to oh, now. Oh, go, just go back to uh, go back to 2000, 2020. Uh, 2020. Go back to 2020. Yeah. He's alert. He's terrific. He really did a good job there. What we saw the other night, I almost had to turn the TV set off because I felt so bad for him. Yeah. You know, the thing is, his family shouldn't even be putting him out there. Oh, I th really they should. Not they should have told him that hey, you're done. You have time the to only reason he's still running no, right no. now at this very minute is his Wasn't ego, it. you know. Yeah. And, and my feeling is, if, if ego, it, what? I think it's Dr. Jill's ego. I think Dr. Jill is running him. Running, she's running the presidency right well, now. Well, I'm just saying, like just Reagan. like uh, Nancy Reagan. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, right? yes, good, good, good example. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean. Uh, he, he, to begin with, he is too old to be president. I, and as somebody who's approximately within his age range, uh, I'm not being ageist about this. 
I mean, I know what I'm capable of at my age and the kind of lapses of memory and uh, a certain laziness that I, uh, that I have because of my getting older. Uh, I know that my stamina isn't what it was, and I know what it, it's like to be this age. And knowing that, I feel that he should not be running, you know. And he's, he's doing a great disservice to America and doing a great disservice to the Democratic Party if he'd like to leave with a legacy, with a great legacy, he should quit now. Hello, Don Geller. Mm -hmm. Hey. How are you, Don? I'm not among the majority of everyone there who thinks he's a dropout. Really? I, you, you believe he should run? I believe that, that everyone, including this panel, is caught up in this ridiculous media narrative. Well, I agree with Don. I think they want him to drop out, Don, because they want the media wants Trump to win. Man, they want him to win. with somebody else, Tony. I'm not buying that either. I it, think what I read today is, is some the Republican media is not a monolith. Yeah, but some Republican said today, and this is a great, amazing what he said. He said, uh, and I can't remember who the Republican was. That really we don't we want to run against Joe Biden, because we think we can win. We don't want to run against somebody else, and we don't want them doing bait and switch. What? Do they even know what bait and switch is? <laughs> you know, this isn't baiting and switching. But, you know, I mean, the thing here is, Don, you got to admit, is to win. Okay. And he will win. Well, how? How? He, already he's down six points. According to one poll, another yeah, poll. No, there was another, another poll, another poll another, where he had a problem, too. Yeah. Another poll has Trump at 50 and Biden at 48. It means nothing. It, it has the bottom. It, it, he has not cratered. Okay. Now, let me just ask you this, okay? Uh, and and uh, because, I, I, you know, I don't, I, I, I'm one of the, I always could believe that we should stick with uh, the, the date we brought to the dance, yeah. you know? Uh, but um, my question is, let's not think about next year. Let's think about two years down the line. He's a little bit older. Do you feel confident with him being president at that age? I'm not thinking in those terms. I'm, in, I'm thinking of winning the election. I'm hmm. thinking of not okay. letting Trump get back in there. And that, that's the first primary goal. Yeah. And yeah. everything else will take care of themselves mm -hmm. after. Well, we all have the same... You know, yeah, we all, we all want this. To we happen. all have the same aim here, except, of course, for trucker Steve, who isn't an American and lives in Canada. But, uh, you know, but he's and watching he's Canadian watching this with great. Am, he's watching this with a great amusement. Right, trucker Steve. <laughs> there, there's this great quote that uh, and I, I forget that he's a uh, um, an historian. His last name is, is Lickman, L.I.C. <laughs> Mm -hmm. do, you, do, do you know the name is that uh, I can't remember his first name and he, he was interviewed and he said Republicans have no principles Democrats have no spine yeah I you know I don't know that I necessarily agree with the spine part I mean I I think there are problems that the the, the Democrats have I think the kind of problem they have is being enmeshed in this current problem they don't know how to solve it you know i mean not biden doesn't even know how to solve it biden hasn't been anywhere for a week he hasn't been in public outside of that one speech he gave the next day which North he was Carolina, yeah. yeah which we, he was set to do he hasn't done any interviews he hasn't done anything he's doing one he's doing one with stephanopoulos very soon i don't know when yeah Who, <laughs> trump hasn't been anywhere either no trump hasn't been disappeared too he has a they say and and i i noticed it when i watched the uh, the debate that he is was kind of thrown off by biden and and how badly he was performing yeah. he didn't know how to react to that at one point remember he says well i don't know what he just said and probably he doesn't either uh yeah. but he didn't say that in a mean way he said that in almost the first time I've ever seen Trump this way in a caring way. It doesn't matter. 
Well, what does matter, Don? Uh, November, whenever it is. Uh, his, name, his name is Alan Lickman. <laughs> November, November 3rd. November 3rd. November 3rd, yep. November 3rd. Yeah. If this had happened in October, then yes, there would be some alarm, some justified alarm. But it's not. Well, there's going to be uh, another the, the, debate, the, the, you know, closer to the election. Yeah, number, yeah. Do we wait for that and see him screw up there? The, the, the debate last week had less public view than any previous debate. Yeah. Uh, was that and true? The only people who are, who are obsessed with it are pundits and media and people who, who, who have their own... In, well, no, I... I Scratch that. I don't know what their interests are. It's, it's, I, I, uh, that's just a suspicion. Um, but as I said, the, the, the polls, the numbers have not cratered. If they begin to, then yeah, there, there's a problem. But, but the problem is in the minds of pundits and exactly. people who are taking this way too seriously than it merits. Well, Biden's outraised Trump almost two to one since the debate. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah, it seems everybody everybody in this race who somehow has some kind of negative thing happen to them mm -hmm. suddenly earns money. <laughs> you know? I mean, Trump gets convicted as a felon. What happens? Yeah, he, he raises $150 million or something. It's right. Doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense. It doesn't, look, it doesn't make sense that this guy's even running for president yeah. and anybody's taking him seriously yeah, considering all the baggage. So I mean, what's what? Why, why complain about it? That's reality. Yeah, but nobody's calling for Trump to drop out, and he's a convicted yeah. felon thirty-four times over. What's about <laughs> what, what about that? That's ridiculous. Oh, but nobody's uh, calling for Biden to drop out. Nobody's calling for Trump. Well, you know what got me is is mm -hmm. you tune in uh, MSNBC and all these people, and they're just talking this stuff to death. And what it was <laughs> was the other day when the Supreme Court came out with this thing. About the that, about the uh, uh, he, he, that he uh, couldn't be considered. He could, he couldn't be uh, prosecuted because he has presidential immunity. And then they voted on that, and they came out with the fact was, basically, he has presidential immunity in certain affairs of state. But if it isn't an affair of state, he it doesn't have presidential immunity. But it's a case by case thing, so now you gotta go each time that he does something and prove that it had nothing to do with his job in office. Like yeah, which I, means that none of these court cases are gonna be decided by the election. Oh no, none That's of them. Given. No, I mean not, if he's back in office, none of them will be decided because yeah. he just keep postponing it. Just keep postponing it. He'll never get Postpone it, he'll just drop them. Yeah, he'll yeah. he'll just drop it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm saying the Supreme Court will never get a chance to look at it because no. They won't. Oh, the Supreme Court could look at it, but you know how they're going to come out. They're going to do and everything. They, what they did with this decision was make it so that he would not have to go to any of these cases before, right, before the election. Before the election. Yeah, however, it, however the election. there's a thing here in New York, you know, uh, which he lost. Uh, and uh, they were supposed to sentence him uh, in August, I believe. July. Now, it was supposed to be next, next week. week I think. Oh, it was, it was, oh, it was supposed, to be, oh, it was supposed to be this week? Off. Okay. Anyway, they decided to, to hold it off, yeah, because they've got to figure out what's going on. Wait a minute. There's nothing going on. This case was not about him as president. This case was about him years ago. But there and, were elements that do involve while he was president, and that's that's what there are. That, that's no, no, there was. There, they say there was certain evidence that was brought in about actions he had taken while he was president to show his yeah. morality or whatever, but that uh, that that wasn't the, the case in point. The case in point was that he jimmied the records of his company, and uh, and and uh, you know. Falsified his. Yeah, no, we, we know that. You know. The, so, so, so it has nothing to do. And, it has. And that's not that's not being argued. Yeah, but I don't. can't do anything with that because they postponed the sentencing. You know, well, well, the, the well, issue is what, what you do is you sentence him. You let him do his appeals, and if he wants to, go to the Supreme Court again and say, "Is this part of my business being, you know, 
Uh, here's the thing with the with the case here in uh, Washington D.C. with him in July uh, January six. I want to know who paid for that podium and that uh, little get together out there uh, when he gave his speech. Was that paid for by the taxpayers, or was that paid for by him? And if it was paid for by him, then it is, isn't a, uh, a political thing that he was doing. It wasn't part I of his... I think Jimmy Thomas paid for that. Huh? Clarence Thomas's wife paid for that, I believe. <laughs> Did she really? She paid oh. for that... I think she paid for that whole uh, speech and stuff. And okay, so you know, if 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 the government, if the where, where we, did he, where did he get that? She didn't do. I don't. I, I mean, I, that's uh, organization that she's. Oh, the organization of, or part of, paid for that January sixth speech that Trump gave. Google it. Yeah, because I'm somebody sure. set up that sure podium. That. Somebody set up that podium yeah. in that stage. And if the, we didn't pay for it, the government didn't pay for it, then it can't possibly consi be considered part of his job as president. Yes. So <clears throat> if I understand the Supreme Court right, and it's a mess, <clears throat> Trump could do anything he wants in office as president again, if he becomes president. He could go after his adversaries or whatever. He should be not happy but worried because I guess Biden's president right now. And so what's stopping Biden from just locking Trump up or worse? Because he won't. Because he won't. <laughs> well, he won't because he's not that type of person, but you know. He's almost, his problem is he's almost, even on a good day, he's almost too nice to debate Donald Trump mm -hmm. because yeah. Trump just does nothing but lie and cast aspersions and say you're a crook. Yeah. And there wasn't a single thing that Trump did in that in that whole debate that had anything to do with what he was going to do if he became president. Mm -hmm. It was all about you know oh you you know you're a crook and you know you and your whole family are crooks and you know he he didn't he didn't say anything. What about the golf game thing? Well, well they stupid. both they both got in that pissing match. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, you're going to tell me that Trump is worse of a golfer than Biden? Biden doesn't own three golf courses. I mean, you know. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah but just because you own a golf course doesn't mean you're good at golf. Yeah. He buried his wife on Mike the night. Oh, the I buried his wife on the <laughs> night. Was it the night? I don't know where he buried her. I don't think. I don't think it was on one of the on holes. The ninth hole. In Jersey, right? Well, what they did, they did on the ninth hole with their mouth open. <laughs> When you said I, I that, you were joking. I what, what, are you, what are you saying? Wait a minute. Don. Don is... Oh, no, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, no, Don. I, I didn't mean to interrupt your golf stories. Uh, <laughs> Charlie, I, I don't see anything. Well, I'm, I'm Googling it now. Yeah, she, there I mean, were emails going back and forth. Yeah, yeah. She, she was texting uh, Meadows. Yeah, um, so she was involved somehow. Oh, but yeah, I, no. I'm, I'm not questioning her involvement, but I think it was more... Um, uh, uh, not financial. I can't think of another word. More emotional rather than financial. By the way, by the way, what are we going to do about the Supreme Court? Uh, well, let's the, let's uh, the seven uh, of us figure it out. They, they, they okay. can't have lifetime jobs either. This is ridiculous. What? They, they're there forever. They're, they have a job for life, right? That's their... Yeah, but they're supposed that, that's to be change. impartial. They obviously are not impartial. Well, I don't know if anybody says the Supreme Court is supposed to be impartial, but the Supreme Court is supposed to make its decisions based upon the Constitution right. and, well, and, their, and their interpretation of the Constitution. I don't know how any of this had to, you know, I, to have the idea that a president of the United States is immune from any kind of prosecution for his actions, why, even while he's in office, you know. I mean, I understand what they're trying to say, but the the pr burden of proof shouldn't be that he, you know, shouldn't be all of that. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, it's it's ridiculous. You know. I was going to show up tomorrow and Friday, but I guess not. I guess I can't. Maybe we're going to show up where? Here. Here, really? Well, you can by yourself. Really? Why? Because it's a vague. What are you doing on the Fourth of July? Learning how to count. 
He said well, the seven of us could resolve the Supreme Court. Yeah. There's we, eight of us on the show. None of you are being allowed to leave until I we solve seven. this problem. Okay. Well, but yourself, too. Yeah. Oh, I, okay, six. Let, yeah. Um, by the uh, way, I what are eight. you doing on the 4th of July? Anything eight. exciting, Don? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm in the weeds of, uh, of, this, of this project. Also, I, I, I was hoping to find these, these folders that I've been looking for for years in this filing cabinet that, that was until early this week buried behind a, a, a bookcase and... and, and well, uh, just look at the it, papers stacked up behind you. Well, that's important stuff. <laughs> enough. His taxes from 2014 that he plans to put in. Actually, I, I found tax returns for 1986. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Did you really? Why do I know I keep mine. Why, why do we keep our tax returns from that long ago? Nobody's going to say, hey, you cheated back in 1980. Would you please show us your tax returns? I was thinking of a, a Simon and Garfunkel song from Bookends. The, the song, uh, it's the last track on the first side called bookends theme mm -hmm. and and one of the lyrics is preserving your memories it's all you have yeah. it's all you have left or something like that that's it yeah but uh, in, income taxes your memories if that's the best memories you have it's, you haven't had much of item. a life I'm sorry, I'm sorry you brought it up <laughs> i have every income tax i've ever filed since 1971 first time i ever filed Every copy of it. Yeah. Well, that's great. You only need to hold seven years by law, I think. I don't care what I need to hold. That's what I want to hold. Yeah, mock him. Yeah. Actually, I don't think I need to hold on to any of them because my business manager has a copy of every one of them. Yeah. And look. Hewlett you know Packard was nice enough mm -hmm. to send me four Ooh. brand new inkjet cartridges, just to change the subject real quick. Because I know Don had the last say so last week. It was cute, and they're not and they're not connected to the uh, instant ink thing. Yeah, uh, but uh, that's not a problem. The problem is, are you still having to use their instant ink thing in order to no, make your computer work? It expires work? November eleventh. Uh, when and they, when it expires, I pop their cartridges out. They stop mailing me, and I put a new set in. And, and start running. But do you them. have to constantly use their cartridges, is what I'm saying? Yeah, you have to use HP. Well, that's paint. bullshit. Yeah, well, you know, I've had problems with the... Uh, I ruined my last printer by using generic cartridges, so... I use generic cartridges all the time, and I never had a problem until <laughs> they you know, did this whole deal. Repositories, same, you know. Uh, no, I... For, uh, I, I uh, uh, constantly could use their stuff in their printer and not have a problem at all. But it costs you, like, to fill them all up, it costs you something like 135 bucks or something. It does. Whereas to fill up my, uh, my uh, uh, Epson here, is the Epson? Yeah. The Epson mm -hmm. with the ink that just goes in there costs you, like, right. 35 bucks. You know. You got a lot of money. Why don't you have a laser printer? I don't want a laser printer. Why would I want a laser printer? It's cheaper to operate. No, it's Quick. not. No, they're not. Oh, not. oh no. If you looked I at the car. I've worked with Xerox. Laser printers we're not, are not cheaper. We're not, to we're not talking about a big laser printer. We're talking about a home laser printer. Charlie. A home laser printer, the, yeah, the, know, the cartridges for that are expensive. Well, here, I'll look it up for you. No, you don't have to look it up. We'll just go up to Amazon. We go to uh, laser printer ch cartridges, laser printer ink. Okay, let's see here. Ink cartridges, laser printer ink cartridges. Here we go. What do they cost? Uh, okay. Oh yeah, this is good. If you got, you want color, right? Yeah. I I don't need color. Yeah, but 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 most people want color. Color's going to be. Expensive. We're going to have to compare it against color because yep. you're going to do okay. color with the with these cartridges okay. they gave you. Uh, a four by four high yield toner cartridge, or four pack, works with uh, the HP Color Printer, uh, five hundred ninety nine dollars. That's a four pack, so it works out to one hundred and. Okay, well here here's a. Uh, 
here's a, well, this is a palm tree, compatible toner cartridge replacement. Uh, uh, yeah, it's not as bad as it used to be. They used to now, be terrible. I looked into it before I started arguing with HP over these cartridges. Mm -hmm. The trouble is, is I don't have the footprint space in my office. To put the laser printer is a lot bigger than my inkjet. It's four inches one way and four inches another way, and that footprint just wouldn't fit very well in here. The original uh, laser printers that HP came out with mm -hmm. were so good and lasted so long mm -hmm. that I finally had to like almost throw mine out a window in order to buy a new a new printer, right? <laughs> You just want to it, would, it was it was like one exactly. of the first ones. It was the HP Laser Printer Two or something. It was, I didn't know that. and yeah. it was they were incredible. And in fact, people at big companies who were using them wanted to get the newest laser printer, right, from their mm -hmm. own. But they couldn't until theirs went bad. And people were saying, "Oh, mine just went bad." And it was amazing how many times they found paper clips <laughs> in the printers. Because yep. somebody wanted a new printer. They were that good. They just wouldn't die. They have changed dramatically. According to Consumer Reports, HP is towards the end of the line in quality and in print, in, you know, in, in HP home laser printers. Mm -hmm. Canon, Canon and Epson are the top of the line ones now. Well, here we are talking about ink again, aren't we, Don? Mm -hmm. I'm not saying anything. One of your favorite topics. <laughs> Sorry, Don. I know when to you, shut up. You got me last Friday on the end of the commercial. Josh brought me <laughs> in about your new microphone, and then at the end, you got microphone. me. I don't have any microphone. No, no, no. I have a new no. microphone. No. Oh, oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. So, you know. So, yeah, I don't, you know, I, 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 I don't, the only comparison I have is the last, uh, um, HP uh, inkjet that I had, and it worked great, even with generic cartridges. But but I put a generic in. Generics are. How much you know, longer are we going to talk about this subject? <laughs> Zero. I think, Trump, I think Trump needs a new. I think saber. we should have ended it where you, uh, we should have Trump ended up. it when you said, "Look, HP sent me these cartridges. Good. Now on to other stuff." <laughs> And then somebody started giving me a hard time about they, you got to use HP. What? I I won't buy I won't buy another HP printer. But here I go. What are we talking about this for? Let's talk about shavers. I just got a new Norelco shaver. Oh god. Oh god. I bought food at the supermarket today. Did you really? Yeah. Let's talk about that. What you got? Hey, by mm -hmm. the way, you know something at my supermarket? We've gotten to love this uh, Briars Mint Chip. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. And so we went. No, in, it's dog we, food, Tony. We, <laughs> can you let me finish what I'm saying without being without interrupting me? Because this is very important. And we went down there uh, one day to get some because we had run out, mm -hmm. and they had the the, the 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 freezer roped off, saying freezer broken. Oh, shit, no ice cream? Well, I undid the wire, and I got out some of the mint chip, and I, and I handed it over to Marjorie, and it, and it was all melted inside, and she oh, grabbed yeah. it and it exploded and everywhere. Oh, man. Yeah, so, you know, you know so I'm then doing? we finally we went back the other day, and they had some. Okay, they got the freezer fixed, and they had some. And then today we went in, and they don't have any. So now we got to eat the mint chip we've got very slowly. Alex, I got a good ice cream for you for mint chip. My brother bought it for me. It's called Bunny Ice Cream. It's soft, but it's almost like Carvel. It's, it's called Bunny, and they have different flavors. It's chocolate, vanilla, chocolate, mint. It's really good. I think it's better than Briar's, actually. I was just eating it watching the Stevie Van Zandt documentary. Yeah, it's that addictive, yeah. He brought it home for me. I said, oh, this is good. I'm going to eat this whole thing, I said. Because <laughs> I just eat it out of the thing. What does this just, show become? We were talking about politics. We were, we were, getting, we're doing some intelligent discussions about things. You know, even Giller phones up and uh, it gets uh, irate at the fact that we're going after Biden here and we should give the guy a chance. And, and other people are going, yeah, well, you can't do Kamala Harris 
if you don't do Kamala Harris, the blacks in America are going to going to be mad at you. Which I mean, you know, no. when have we gotten to the point in this country where we worry about one group or another being pissed oh, off at a I candidate? Mean. You know. It makes a difference if whether the, you can get elected hey, or not. If the blacks don't hate Donald Trump by now, then they're right. the stupidest race on the face of the earth. Exactly. Okay? Yeah. I'm going to send you ice cream, Alan. You know, it just I mean, got demonetized. No, but what I'm saying is it's <laughs> it's important that that we we don't say, hey, you know, we can't do that because this this group of people will be unhappy with it. Because we have split up America enough as it is already without creating that divisiveness ahead of time. I'm not know? saying create anything. It's out there. It's there. Whether you want to deal with it or not is the issue. You know, I mean, come on. We gave you Beyonce for crying out loud. <laughs> leave us alone, oh, okay? somebody gave me Beyonce. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but, Charlie, you really think they wouldn't vote if they swapped her out? I'm saying you piss off. 20, 25 million, however many there are black people I, in the United I States just, are passing over her. I, I don't think there were 25 million blacks in America who said, look, we have a black <laughs> vice president. He might be right about that. <laughs> you know? Well, you know, I'm saying, to begin every with, white to, vice to, president to, was able to, to ascend To begin with, the I, never, I, never, I never thought about it. In fact, when you bring it up, I have to think for a second and go, oh, yeah, she is black. You know, because it doesn't matter to me. Yeah, she's oh, yeah. pissed off a bunch yeah. of females. That's half the population. Well, I've been pissing off females all my life. <laughs> Why stop now? You guys are thinking about uh, Gavin Newsom running, but what about Michelle Obama? Nah, she wouldn't take it. She doesn't yeah, want no. it. She doesn't want it. Nah. But that's not the only way to get away with it is you replace it with another black woman. How about how about taking Gavin and making him in first place, and him offering it to Michelle Obama for vice president? It, it, I'm, to begin with, I'm, if somebody has to ask Michelle Obama, and I'm sure her answer would be, "I've had enough of being at the White House." Okay, yeah. you know, she 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 almost uh, spent those four eight years biting her lip. You know, she she was. Yeah. She wasn't that happy with having to live I, in the Kind in of like Melania, that. right? Huh? Bites her lip all the time. I saw a, a a roast of Donald Trump on Comedy Central. It took place in uh, 2012, I think it was. And they showed Melania, and she was laughing her head off. What she was like? uh, she was alive, and she felt you know she she had a smile on her face and. Hmm. She looked radiant, really, to be very honest. She just got married the year before, didn't yeah. they? Now, she looks like, really, I, I, I'm staying married to this guy because, uh, well, I don't think she's it's she's losing idea. reasons. Let me put it that way. Yeah. When you was know. the last time you ever saw her smile around Trump? Right, but uh, <laughs> on that on that roast, she was smiling, and not because they were making fun of him. She was just enjoying herself. Yeah. I thought he was going to say, when was the last time she saw his penis? <laughs> when's the, well, the question is, when's the last time he, when's the, when's the last time he saw his penis? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Not real wild. That's why he's got mirrors on every wall. True. Yeah. Yeah. Gold toilets. Who has gold toilets? I mean, really? Uh, Come on. Well, who thinks gold is, you know, everything's, uh, gold. Uh, everything's gold. Everything's gold. Uh, all the blue collar workers thinks he's one of them. Yeah. So you got the dog with you, Trucker Steve? Yeah, he's sleeping on the floor. Is he yeah. sleeping right now? He's right there. You see him? There he is. Oh, there he is. There. Where is he? Let me see here. There's your foot. Where's the dog? Foot. <laughs> oh, there he is. Oh, wow. He's knocked out, isn't he? Yeah, he's gone. He's wow. zonked. End of the day. Yeah. He likes traveling with you, doesn't he? Yeah. 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 So how's it going being uh, now that you've got, you know, your kidney and everything like that? Is it all working out okay? I'm fine. You're fine? I mean, yeah. there's, you don't, do you, do you, you have to, of course, go to a doctor on, very, you know, on. Every three months now. Every three you months. You have to take meds, anti-rejection meds. 
Every day. Yeah. Yeah. Until the day I croak. I no. took anti rejection meds and I still couldn't get a girlfriend. <laughs> I had to say that. How's this compared to the Letterman show, uh, Don? <laughs> Considering it's been off the air for nine years, uh, I I think I prefer the Letterman show. <laughs> Here, here's the thing, you know, Marjorie never got to see the Letterman show because it was on too late. So now all of a sudden she's discovered David Letterman on YouTube, and that's all she watches on YouTube is endless amounts of Dave. Great. Great. And she has to admit that he was really brilliant. I mean, especially when he would just sit there by himself. He could have done a whole hour by himself. It was terrific. It was just I like when Elvis came on the show. <laughs> you mean Shecky? Shecky, yeah. Yeah. I put together a, a Shecky is Elvis compilation. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. yeah. He, uh, it's on Don Giller slash HP Inkjet slash. <laughs> no, but what he is going to do is he is going to put together a compilation of this show where we just talk about inkjet printers. <laughs> yeah, Sorry, I'd like to give that to everybody. Yes. Sorry, Don. I, if Don Giller put that together, and then put it up with his name on it. Nobody would ever pay attention to Don Giller's name on YouTube again. <laughs> it will work. Um, I put it, oh, uh, last week, uh, back in 1968, uh, uh, John Lennon and Paul McCartney appeared on The Tonight Show. Um, this was in May, mid-May 68 to promote Apple, which they had just formed. And Joe... Garagiola was the guest host. Johnny was uh, was touring, doing stand-up in other parts of the country, so he wasn't there. And Tallulah Bankhead uh, was so drunk, and she kept on interrupting. Uh, anyway, I, I taped the audio. Um, uh, somebody somewhere taped maybe five minutes worth of uh, footage from his home mo from his movie camera, or his family's movie camera, uh, the, uh, and like snippets of of the of that have appeared on youtube so what i did is uh, uh i digitized the full i think 22 minute total interview uh and then and, and then synced the footage that exists into where they're actually you know syncing the the footage mm -hmm. with what they're saying and and put it up on youtube because apparently no one has ever put up the entire appearance well that's incredible yeah, so that was fun. It got it got a lot of. It 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 got. It, it's not going to get as many views as as HP printing, but still, it was okay. Yeah, let me ask you this though: what, uh, it's on YouTube right now. Yeah. What's uh, yeah. what's the title of it? So we, if we want to go looking for it, we can find it. Let me see. Hang on. It's when? a tough one. John Lennon, comma Paul McCartney on the Tonight Show. May 14th, 1968, complete audio. Wow. Okay. And it's got uh, 8.7 thousand views. Uh, that's for three days worth. So today's Wednesday. So yeah, I put it up, I think, Monday morning. Um, uh, I bet NBC doesn't have, even have a copy of that. Oh, they don't. They, uh, <clears throat> NBC uh, erased the tape. Oh, really? Oh, those were the days when they went in and they were yeah. erasing a lot of them because... Because they couldn't afford it. Well, it wasn't also that they couldn't afford it. They couldn't afford the space because yeah. these yeah. were those big two-inch mm -hmm. reels, right? And Isn't they expensive? Uh, huh? <clears throat> they're very expensive, but NBC had money to pay for them, right? Every, if you wanted to videotape stuff, you had to buy these huge reels anyway. I think they ran a couple hundred bucks a reel, didn't they? Something like that. Amazing amount. But the the fact was that they didn't, uh, they couldn't uh, keep them because they, there it, 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 it was too much, they took up too much space. So at NBC at one point, they said, no, this is before that. Thumb drives. Yeah, this is 64 gig. It only costs Can I finish what I was saying? <clears throat> I'm can. trying to explain it. 
because I was I know the story. What they did is they went in and they said, "Oh well, t let's take all these Tonight shows and erase the tapes and reuse them." That was the reason they got lost, is because they just went and finally um, they stopped doing that. Uh, they realized they were making a big mistake by by ru ruining it. There he is. There's oh, there a, there's a show. Oh boy. Well, you've recreated some history here. But anyway, yeah. so um, I worked at I was with Armed Forces Radio and Television Service, and what they did is they recorded every Tonight Show. But they put it on 16 millimeter film so they could send it out to the troops. Okay, and then they when, all. When was this? What's what time period? This is I'm uh, in the Navy in 1960. I got out. Of, I went in 63. Got out in 65. So mm -hmm. I was there in that period of time, and and they had all these tapes. They made about uh, films rather. They made about uh, five kinescopes for every episode. And they also did that for a lot of other shows. So one day they decided they didn't have any room left. And I walked by a garbage bin that was filled completely with all these 16 millimeter films. And I didn't think to take one <laughs> or two or three or see how many I could put under my arm and take home with me uh, because they were throwing away a lot of the Tonight Shows. You know, so that's what happened with all of that. Did I ever tell you uh, when the uh, Late Show ended, this was on a Wednesday, May mm -hmm. 20th, uh, Thursday uh, was was dumpster day when, when all these scavengers came out. Came, came, right, right. Yeah, and they, they, and they picked and they, they threw out the stage, they threw out everything, they tore everything apart, and then fans came and, and retrieved as much as they could from these giant dumpsters. By Friday... Uh, uh, security tightened so that there are now ropes and no one could access the, these giant dumpsters anymore. The following Monday, mm -hmm. my dad was in town and, and we all, and, and my and my step family, and we all ate at a nearby restaurant. And after the, after the restaurant, I left, it was maybe two or three blocks from the, from the Sullivan Theater. So I walked down there uh, also, I wanted to take pictures of of the marquee because I I heard that the next day they were going to start taking it down, and I decided to want I decided to see what the what the security was like around the corner where where the dumps the, the giant dumpster was gone. You know this mm. this huge you know, truck truck sized dumpster, and instead the regular smaller dumpsters were were by the sidewalk, unprotected. <laughs> so I went in there. I went there, opened the dumpster, and found. Tons of videotapes. Really, really. And now there are two dumpsters, um, and I was I was working on that one. Other people came by, and they were working on the other dumpster. They had no interest in the videotapes because none of them had VCRs anymore. So I grabbed everything that I could that I could grab, and it turns out they were tapes thrown out of. There was a writer named Joe Grossman. I right, know, I know Joe Grossman. Yeah. Uh, there were his production tapes. Wow. Uh, it, it, much of it consisted of raw rehearsals, outtakes. Wow. Um, with Dave and Jude and, and, and the staff. Anyway, and, listen, I'm, the theme is running, and i got to yeah, get out of here. But, boy, that's a find. You still well, have those tapes. I'll continue it tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> yes. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, uh, Charlie. Thank you, Trucker Steve. Uh, where are you, by the way, right now, Trucker Steve? Uh, Trenton, Ontario. Trenton, mm -hmm. Ontario. Okay. It's uh, just uh, east of Toronto. Okay. About an hour. Thank east you. Of, uh, a couple hours. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you to Tony. And, of course, Don Giller. It's always a pleasure. We're going to have lunch tomorrow, right? I did, I did, I did. Uh, maybe he is expecting now he's probably for thinking like did i really say i was gonna have lunch with him oh my yeah, god how do i how do i get out of this anyway listen we run out of time here i gotta go everybody wave goodbye okay ladies and gentlemen there they go okay there's our citizen panel for tonight uh and uh, i'm here 
and I'm going to say goodbye to you. We're not doing a show tomorrow night, not doing a show on uh, Friday, but we'll be back here on Monday for the uh, pop-up show, and then we will see you again, uh, same time, same station in life, right here, 1030, uh, next Wednesday. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye, everybody. Gee, I haven't said goodbye to any of you guys at all, have I? I just, they're still there. You, you, do you have a good time? <laughs> well, I, was, I was walking up the street today, yeah. and I saw this, this elderly couple. One looked like you, one looked like Marjorie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I figured, no, that's not possible. So I just went on. and, they, and they Wait, where up. were you? Uh, on Broadway. Oh, oh uh, no. I wasn't even uh, near uh, there. Uh, between 97th and like 100th Street. Yeah. Well, yeah, we've even been there. Yeah. Anyway, everybody, goodbye. I gotta go. <laughs> I gotta go uh, take care of. Uh, strike the set. See. Uh, I'm a uh, there for we it. go. There. <laughs> there we go. That's, that's all I have to do. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> anyway, uh, but Giller, I'm serious. We got to get together sometime. Yeah. I, I I would like that. Yeah. Let's let's not just talk about. It. Let's do it. Okay. I will talk to you all later. Bye. Have a nice Bye. have a nice Fourth of July. Thank you. <laughs> bye bye.